Hello, my name is Richard and this video is about commercial coffee grinders. We're going to discuss some of the different designs, how they work and which ones we think are best. We're often asked about this subject and I think it's probably worth uh, spending a bit of time to put some information down on video uh, so that it can be shared more widely. This type of equipment's not cheap, there are some pitfalls that can be made and I think if we can steer a few people away from those and towards the path of better coffee then this will probably have been worthwhile. At this point, I need to bring up a potential conflict of interest. We sell uh, coffee machines and grinders. So if I am talking about anything that we sell, I'll try and make it clear that we do that and I'll try and be as unbiased as possible, but it's important that you bear that in mind. First thing we'll do is talk about a particular design that we would advise you to steer clear of. Then we'll run through a range of more suitable uh, equipment and then finish off on um, some specialty uh, shop deli grinders that uh, are not used for espresso but you may come across and you need to know that they're not suitable for making espresso. Okay so there are two main types of grinders dosing grinders and on-demand grinders. Uh, this is a dosing grinder and I'm afraid we're gonna get the negative stuff out of the way uh, right off the bat. Um, uh, we would advise you do not use one of these and I'll talk about why. This is a machine that uh, we took out of a customer's uh, premises when we took over um, from the previous supplier. We installed an on-demand grinder and they're, they're much, much happier with it. I have taken a piece of tape and covered up the logo on this uh, because I don't want to uh, needlessly disparage a manufacturer. The problem with this grinder is not the manufacturer. I expect they make perfectly good on-demand grinders. The problem with this is the design. Um, we'll talk about that now. How it works is you know, the bean hopper as normal. Uh, you've got as normal uh, a ring here to change the grind of the coffee as it comes through. When, the, when you switch the machine on it starts grinding coffee into this chamber. The level of the coffee Will slowly rise and when it gets to the top there's a micro switch which tells it to stop grinding. It's now full of ground coffee. Quite a lot. Uh, enough for dozens, uh, dozens of shots. In the bottom of this chamber there is something that looks like that. Uh, a series of compartments that look like a dairy lee cheese and they turn the way you work it is you take your port filter, you put it in here and you pull this lever and the coffee dispenses into the port filter. Now the problem is is that it doses by volume not by mass. Each of these chambers in the bottom of the uh, uh, in the bottom of the cylinder here are a, a certain volume. Um, now that volume will change depending on environmental factors and also how much coffee is in here and how and therefore how much weight is pushing down and squashing it. If it's full there's going to be a lot more weight squashing it down there'll be more coffee in there. I've run tests uh, with a customer's machine and the dose varied approximately up to 23% in between shots. Now that is, that's, that's way too much uh, to, to, to be reliable for, for making coffee. I should say that these machines were designed for very high volume environments. When you, if you've ground the coffee before you drop it into the porta filter, all you have to do is pull this lever the coffee drops into the porta filter and you can get on with making your coffee. However, a good on-demand grinder, I think, will take a very similar, maybe possibly a few seconds more to work. Um, however, given the negatives that I'm about to talk to you about, I think uh, an on-demand grinder is a better choice. The, so, the, the two main problems are, the first one I've said is that your dose is going to vary by 23% from, uh, from shot to shot. Good coffee is all about consistency. 
you want the same dose going through the same temperature at the same time and that's how you make good consistent coffee. The other problem is that you've ground a couple of dozen shots worth here. When your extraction times start to vary as they invariably will through the day as the temperature changes, as the, the beans change, as the humidity changes, you need to adjust the grind to keep your extraction within the time, within the time frames that you want in order that you're extracting good coffee. When you need to change that, you will change your grind, but now you've got a couple of dozen shots to get through before the new grind comes through and the timings actually change. So realistically, you're gonna be chasing your tail all day. The extraction's never gonna be right. You, you can't quickly adjust your grind and then get that grind through into the porter filter and onto the coffees. And for that reason alone, I would advise not to buy this type uh, of grinder. They're still available. There's a lot of them for sale secondhand on eBay and they're for sale on eBay for a reason. The next category are dosing grinders. Uh, there's a wide range of these. We'll, we've got quite a few here today that I can talk through. Uh, these are towards the smaller end of the scale. This is, this is pretty much the smallest end, uh, the smallest end of the scale. Uh, that, that you can get. Um, um, what you get with a dosing grinder uh, is a piece of machinery on the front that simply doses by time. Uh, the more expensive ones dose by mass. What we've got here is we're dosing by time. So you will set this machine to grind for anything from 3 to 14 seconds depending on how powerful it is and that will correspond to the mass that you want in your port filter. Uh, you do have to correct this as you change the grind, but that's probably getting a little bit too complicated. So what we, what we have here, this is a uh, very small, very compact uh, machine. It's cheaper. Um, however, it will take longer to grind, for instance, a 19 gram double dose. The porter filter sits in the machine here, and when you push this, it hits a little switch that grinds your coffee into the porter filter. And if I get it straight, it will stay there. That will run for a certain amount of time, which corresponds to your dose. Uh, this machine is slightly different. The porter filter sits in there. And instead of the micro switch being behind the porter filter so that you just bump it to turn it on, you press the button on the top and it will run for the time that you've told it to to dose your porter filter. The advantage over the previous type is that I, if I run this through my coffee machine, my extraction is not quite right. I simply have to change the grind slightly and the next ex I'll then purge the um, I'll then pur purge the machine to get rid of the old grind, and then the new grind will be through straight away. Therefore, I can keep on top of extraction times, and that that's that's what most places use on-demand grinders. It's as simple as that. Uh, these machines differ uh, in the position of the micro switch. They differ uh, on the position of the adjusting ring for the uh, for the burrs for the grind uh, however they do exactly the same thing out of the two i would say that this one has the uh, upper hand when it comes to adjustability because to change the time that you grind for and therefore the dose this just has two buttons plus and minus you just press them and it goes up or down. Whereas on this one, you have to press and hold, go into a menu, find your way through, and do it that way. So both good, but I like the adjustability, the speed of adjustability on this one better. Okay, on-demand grinders part two. What we have here are some more, uh, essentially <laughs> more expensive grinders. Um, this is the same make as the one that was sitting here before. Uh, it's larger. It's got wider burrs, it's got a more powerful motor, um, uh, and it's got cooling fans 
to keep the temperature down so that the machinery doesn't get too hot uh, and start um, degrading your coffee as you send it through hot, hot burrs. Um, exactly the same as the previous one. Put your port porta filter here, hit the button, and it sends a dose. It sends a dose into the porta filter. You can actually just hear that the fans have just come on. So as we said before, this machine doses by time. You will tell it to grind for four or five or six seconds um, because you know that, that time at that grind will give you your dose. If we alter our grind, and what you're doing when you alter the grind uh, of, uh, of the grinder is you're moving, these are, these are burrs. Every machine has two of these built into here somewhere. The coffee comes down the middle and one of these stays still, the other spins and the coffee comes out in between them. So if we have, if we have a large gap between the two burrs, the coffee will come out very coarse. If we have a very small gap, the coffee will come out very fine. For espresso we want towards the finer end of the scale. If we adjust this gap, because the machine will still grind for the same amount of time, if you have a larger gap and the same amount of time, more coffee is going to come out. So as we change the grind, we must also change time. In order to create, to keep our dose the same and keep our coffee coming out nicely. This machine, you don't need to do that. This machine doses by mass. You can see on the front of it, it says 19 grams. Built into the head here is a scale. So when we put the porta filter in, it weighs it, zeros, and then it will go ahead and grind 19 grams of coffee into the porta filter. There you go, you've got 19 grams. If you need to adjust, you can adjust your grind. And because this weighs every, every single shot, it's one less thing for a barista to do on a busy day and just helps you keep your coffee more and more consistent. Okay, the last category I'm going to talk about are um, shop grinders or deli grinders. Uh, there are probably other names for them too. These are simple machines with simply an on-off switch. There's no way of dosing uh, a set dose. It will go on when you turn it on and off when you turn it off. And we use it for filling bags. They are, this is the same make as one we had up previously. I think it was here. It's the same body. It just has, uh, it does not have the timing mechanism on the front. It's all it's got is a little thing for holding bags. We stick the bag on there and we turn it on. You turn it on when it's, and when you turn it off it stops grinding and it will fill a bag pretty quickly. Um, uh, we call the shop grinders or deli grinders. Just uh, I'm talking about them simply because if you're trying to buy something secondhand just be aware that you can't use these for espresso. You, there's, no, uh, there's no mechanism to create the dose. And this one is the one we have down in the roastery. Uh, I, I very much regretted having to lift it onto this table. Um, we can't even plug it in down here because this is the plug. Um, it's a three-phase motor. It weighs about 35 kilograms. Um, the burrs are about this wide um, and it grinds a lot of coffee really fast. Okay, that's a quick run through commercial espresso grinders. I hope it was useful to, uh, I would hope it was useful to at least someone. Uh, if you're going out and you're buying one of these things, um, there, there's a huge range. Uh, at one end of the scale, you have quite uh, small, cheap, mostly plastic uh, machinery. All the way up, as you spend more money, you get uh, more metal, more powerful motors, larger burrs, better cooling. Fancy, as you get right up to the top end, you get fancy features like the fact that it weighs the coffee for you. And several manufacturers are now starting to bring that in. And it's becoming more common, and I expect the price is going to start coming down, but it's quite expensive right now. If you're going out to buy something, uh, obviously the cheapest place to get anything is on the internet. 
but it does have the downside that you can't get your hands on it and try it out. Um, if it's possible, do try to do that. If you can get your hands on it, play around with the thing. Heavy is a good sign. If you are adjusting the grind, sometimes uh, on the cheaper ones, uh, the mechanism is plastic and it's quite notchy. It will go to a click, to a click, to a click, rather than a smooth, infinite scroll. Um, that means uh, A, it's plastic, it's less durable. B, uh, it's, it's less, uh, it's less customizable. Um, uh, l larger steps. Um, the, the, the grind rings that r run smoothly are called stepless uh, adjustment and it means it's infinite. You can, you can get a very, 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 very small change in grind uh, for your coffee, which helps with your extraction. Um, these things are expensive, uh, but they do last a long time. So buy the best sort of quality that you can afford. So this video was a bit of a test to see how you do this sort of thing. Uh, we are coffee roasters, we um, supply and install machinery, we run our own coffee shop here. Uh, we're building another roastery, much larger, and as part of it there's going to be quite a large uh, uh, barista academy. Uh, so we do pretty much all things coffee and there is potential for uh, some interesting videos. Uh, comment below and uh, let us know what you'd like to see next.